When I say bananas, you say peppers. And you guys, today we are sitting in the beauty room, which is an unusual location for me to be filming a banana peppers video in, but I had a, does this thing really work? That I wanted to test out with you guys today. I feel like it's been a really long time since I've done any, does this thing really works on this channel or done any beauty products? I feel like I used to do more like beauty videos a couple years ago on this channel and I don't know why I stopped because you know what it's fun to just throw something random out there every now and again. Today we're gonna be taking a look at a product that I think is like an indie makeup brand. You guys have to let me know if y'all have seen this before. Once again this is something that I saw really going kind of viral on TikTok a couple of months ago and a lot of y'all were tagging me like in the comments of those videos and I went and tried to buy the product but it was all sold out for a really long time. But now lo and behold they had it on Amazon so I went ahead and grabbed it and I thought it would just be fun to test out with you guys today so I'm not sure if I just said this or not but the brand is called Thirsty Lemon and it is a lemon shaped beauty sponge I always and forever will call everything a beauty blender even though it's not $12.99. It seems like they have 808 reviews and they get 4.5 stars on Amazon. So that is a pretty good rating in my opinion. They say it has an edgeless design. It replaces six plus makeup brushes. You can use it for pretty much anything. I think that their like little tagline is for all things liquid. So they say foundation, BB cream, concealer, contour, blush, highlight, setting powder. This lip Lemon can handle it all. I think that the lemon shape is going to be very interesting to use. I can see where like the top of the lemon here would really make it easy to get like in the corners of your eyes. Normally I am just used to you know the shape and the angle of a beauty blender for like cream contouring and stuff. That's the only thing where I'm like hmm like would it maybe be just more difficult for me to get used to this. I don't know. Uh, right off the bat, I will say it feels and looks like it is a high quality product. Filmed a little clip of me just first like tearing open the packaging and taking it out of the bag just to show you guys like what it looked like. Absolutely brand new because I have already washed this sponge. This is what it looks like after I've already washed it. So far so good because there have been some sponges in the past that I've used and literally like the first time that I start to clean it because lord knows I'm not gentle with the cleaning. Like I want it to be clean and bacteria free if it gets little tears or other just like cosmetic you know boo-boos on it. I don't really care. I just would like for it to be as clean as it possibly can before you know, goes on my face. Even through my pretty rigorous, let's say, washing routine, it still looks brand new. Also, I wanted to show you guys side by side what the sponge looked like dry before I lumped it up and what it looks like now that it's wet. And I feel like it does expand really well. It feels really, really soft. This is just like one of those moments that I wish I could just share with you guys and say, hey, just put your little phalange through the screen, touch the sponge, tell me what it feels like. Cause to me, it feels like some kind of candy. Like, you know, those really like deluxe marshmallows you get like the really fancy marshmallows it's kind of got like that texture it is really soft really springy i really like it so i am gonna do a full full all glam makeup look today so i thought this would be a perfect day to test this out with you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and just put on the two products that I put on before I put on my eyeshadow and stuff. Cause I don't know if anybody else picked that up. I, I never, I always used to do foundation and everything first, then eyeshadow and all of that, like way back in the day before I got on social media. And now that I've been living this YouTube life for like 11 years now, I feel like I have been influenced to do eyeshadow first in case there's any like boo-boos that I make or anything like that. I can clean it up really easy versus if I have like my whole face of makeup done and then I do eyeshadow and then there's fallout and then what do you do? I mean you clean it up but it just kind of sucks. So the two products that I put on before I put on my eyeshadow is the Garnier 
Skin Active Clearly Brighter Anti-Dark Circle Caffeinated little roller ball. Go ahead and put that on. It's so nice and cooling. I kind of miss doing makeup videos, if I'm being honest. I feel like I kind of want to do like a full face first impressions. I used to do those all the time. So let's go ahead and see. <laughs> I don't know what it is about this sponge. It just feels like really cooling, honestly. I mean, I did puff it up with cold water, but it seems to be like retaining coldness longer than other sponges. I don't know. The coldest sponge. <laughs> Can you imagine if like the coldest water? I feel like that's like such a trending water bottle brand. I know that maybe that's like a weird thing to say, but don't you guys feel like you just see the coldest water everywhere? Like even more than like hydro flasks and stuff now. So there is blended, there is unblended so far no complaints. Now it is time to move on to like my holy grail. I have fallen in love with this product. It is the Clinique ID Dramatically Different Moisturizing BB Gel. But like, look at that, the product is gray. Why? You guys are about to see, it like definitely does have a BB cream, you know, coverage. But yeah, why, why is it gray? I don't know. So far, so good. I feel like maybe I'm not applying as much of this stuff as I normally do. I don't know why. Do I not want to get the lemon dirty? I don't know. But like, I should show you guys what this looks like now. Because it's going to be interesting to see if by the time I get my eyeshadow done, if we're going to have to re-wet this sponge, like how much it's going to shrink. Sometimes I'm using a beauty sponge. I have to take a break and re-wet it. And sometimes I don't. So we'll see what does the lemon do. All right, I'm going to put my eyeshadow on. That is a very long process for me. So I'll probably see you guys in like, I don't know, an hour or so. All right, you guys, I am back. And I wish I would have looked to see actually how long this just took me. It is not perfect. My eyeliner isn't done or anything, but I usually like don't blend the eyeshadow out completely, you know, do the under eye until my foundation is on. I'm trying to decide if I want to do concealer today first or foundation. I think I'm going to do concealer. Uh, I want to use some of this like super bright whitening concealer. I think it is. Yeah, it's just called White Out KVD. I don't know what to call this brand because right here it says Kat Von D, but I did just buy this from Ulta or Sephora. I don't remember. You guys have to like fill me in because I thought all of the new packaging now said just KVD on it. And I thought it's been like that for a long time. Who knows? So yeah, this is obviously like extremely brightening. And that's why usually when I use this product, I do like to apply it under my foundation. But see, I mean, it blends out like really easily. Now that is the only thing that I will say I'm currently struggling with this sponge. It's like a good thing or a bad thing, I guess, depending on what you are trying to do. But see, like the sponge is so plump, which is like one of the good things about it. But it makes it really tricky for me to get into these tiny like inner corner spaces like, oh my God, I put too much. I'm kind of panicking. Or like the, my nose crack that I call it. It's kind of like a butt crack on your face, but like, you know, like the, the, the nose crack. If you know, you know. And it's kind of difficult, I think, to get the sponge small enough to get into those spaces, even at the point. I'm trying to go in with these points, which I mean, yeah, the points definitely do help. This is kind of like preferable to me though, is like, this point of the lemon, this point being kind of more, I don't know, squared, it is a little bit difficult for me to work with personally. Like I'm tempted to go in with a makeup brush, which is honestly like something I really don't do, but I feel like that is just gonna be, I don't know, that's gonna be a choice. Now it could just be like simply learning the mechanics of this new tool 
a little bit better. I feel like now when we're about to do foundation, that will be a little bit better of a test. See what I mean? Like, I don't know. Now this one isn't puffed up, so maybe I need to puff this one up so that it's a better comparison, but I feel like I'm just used to having more of a thin point on my blenders before I hit any kind of density. I don't want to say that like I don't like this sponge because so far I really am, but it is just like these inner corners. Like I don't know if I've ever had to bust out like a makeup brush before to do like the inner corners of my eyes or to get into those tighter spaces. But moving on to foundation. I think that this is technically a skin tint. Yeah, but I have been loving this product lately. It is uh, Glowish by Huda Beauty. Now, I think when I repurchase this product, I'm definitely going to get the lightest shade because you guys are going to see I'm definitely going to have to drag this product all the way down my neck. This is in the shade Fair Light, which probably if I had any um, bronzer self tanner on, it would look better. Okay, what is going on here? I'm like, there's no way I've used all this product already. So let's just go in, um, blend it out. Oh, and I did not have to re-wet it. There's that. I feel like that's kind of a good, that's a good sign. And I mean, look at how rapidly I feel like I was able to blend this out. I'm able to just move through large areas and I feel like it's blending everything out like really beautifully. I mean, it does leave your skin with like a really beautiful like airbrushed finish. So yeah, I mean, so far for me, it is not like the actual sponge itself. It's just like, I wish that it was a little bit skinnier. It had a little bit more of an angled portion to it. But once again, I feel like, um, you know, then it wouldn't be the thirsty lemon. It would be like something else. Like I'm just kind of scared that I'm going to be smushing into my eyeshadow if I press down too much, you know, which is the same thing about the inner eye corner. If I really push down to spread the product out and blend it, I would be also like smushing into my eyeshadow, which also, once again, this might not be a problem if you are somebody that applies like concealer, foundation and everything before your eyeshadow. Maybe it's just the weird way that I do things. All right, you guys, I'm gonna let this foundation sit in for a second before I go in with like my other concealers, cream contours, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just gonna let this live on my face and kind of, um, you know, do its thing for a couple of seconds and then I will be right back. All right, I am back. It's been about five minutes. So as I'm sure you guys can see now that the uh, skin tint foundation has oxidized a little bit more, I'm sure you guys can tell this shade does not really, it's not like a perfect match for me, but I do love like how glowy it looks. I feel like that's like the world of online makeup shopping. Sometimes you think you're buying the perfect shade, the perfect match, but hey, it doesn't always work out that way. Next, I'm going to go in with a little bit more concealer, I think. This is the Il Maquillage. What is this called? Honestly, I don't know. I've actually really, really liked this concealer. I recently did a full review for the Il Maquillage Foundation Concealer kind of stuff. This has honestly been my go-to concealer. I feel like it just looks really good and natural on me. And you know, I just add a little bit, especially on days where I've used like another concealer, but it's just like really creamy. So I did just re-moisten the sponge just a little bit. And yeah, I mean, it blends out really quickly and really smoothly, but I still am just struggling just a little bit with these inner corner areas. But I mean, look at that. I feel like I'm blending more than necessary. Like I feel like after a couple taps, everything really does look pretty blended. Up next, I will go in um, with some Dior Air Flash just on kind of like my forehead and stuff, like areas where I tend to like maybe do that a little bit too much, you know? Let's move to a relatively clean 
side of the sponge. Is anybody else like that? Like you have a whole sponge, a whole surface area to work with, and you keep just going back to the same little area. What is wrong with me? That's what I'm kind of confused though. What? I really don't know what the bump is for. The lemon bump is kind of, maybe it's like a handle. I don't know. All right, so uh, time for cream contour. And my favorite for a really long time has been the Huda Beauty Tantor. And this is about to look quite harsh until we blend it out. So do this. Yes. Um, I do like to kind of lay this on a little bit softly with a brush. Is that soft to anybody? Yeah, definitely doesn't look very even right now. Also, let's bring it across the forehead. Go a little in the chin region. Okay, um, that looks really unblended. But hey, <laughs> that's what the thirsty lemon's for. Also, I'm going in with this smaller brush and very lightly just picking up some of that same product. See, I feel like this is gonna be another area that maybe I'm gonna struggle with blending out just a little bit is in the nasal region. Um, I like to kind of do this, like almost connect my brows a little to my nose. Why? I don't know, I like it. Okay, I'm gonna try and use the square of the lemon. I don't know about that, you guys. It just feels really weird to be trying to do that. But maybe I am like able to get a better more pointed blend, I guess you could say. I feel like there will never be a beauty blender replacement for me. I just don't feel like that will happen. The only sponge that ever really like challenged how much I used it versus the beauty blender was the Morphe Stiletto sponge, which I think they discontinued, maybe because it was ripping on a lot of people because I'm gonna see if I can include a picture here for you guys so you can see what it looked like, but it was so sharp and pointed and it was honestly amazing for getting into these, you know, tiny areas. But let's blend out. I mean, see, I feel like that just really softens everything instantly. I wish I had a cream blush to test. I think I do, but just like bright orange because <laughs> it's about to be Halloween time. But I mean, look at that. I mean, just with a couple of seconds, that versus that. Ugh. With the power of makeup. All right. So, um, even though I don't really bake a lot anymore, I feel like I will bake just a little bit today because, you know, they do say that it is good for powder as well. And since I don't have any more like cream products really, so I am gonna just bake lightly. This is the Givenchy uh, Prism Libre. I love this setting powder. And this is in uh, Voile Rose. I'm not saying that right. These Givenchy powders will always be my absolute favorite. See, that actually kind of went in right there kind of good. And this definitely does look like a mess right now. I mean, once again, everything looks like a mess until the exact minute that I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> And then sometimes, honestly, it still looks like a mess, but you know, usually a better mess. See, I feel like I'm so not used to baking. I don't think I put on like an appropriate amount of powder to bake. So I'll probably only have to like very lightly dust this off. I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit more. But see, I feel like it really does press in powder really well. Cause I feel like that started out as like a comical amount of powder on my head. But I mean, honestly, look at how well that blended out. That's wild. See, that leads me to believe if I could get in here just a little bit tighter, that I could be pressing that powder in a little bit more. It's just the inner corner, you guys. So I'm gonna finish my face and then come back with my final, final thoughts. All right, you guys, I am nearly finally done with my makeup. And when I say it has been hours, it has been hours. Obviously I have not like carried the foundation, you know, down. I keep calling it a foundation. It's a skin tint. You guys, I feel like I like literally forget how to talk 
after I've just spent hours doing my makeup, I just kind of like get in the zone and then I'm like, wait, you have to talk again. Um, honestly, my eyeliner today, you guys, turned out a little strange. So I still have to, you know, blend this all down, but I usually wait until I figure out like what outfit I'm gonna wear so I don't just get like makeup all over my clothes. But as I'm sure you guys can see, this is definitely not the correct shade for me. But all of that has nothing to do with the Thirsty Lemon. You guys, I am honestly really impressed by the quality of this sponge. For me personally, is it going to replace my love for the Beauty Blender? No. I personally would probably still grab a Beauty Blender first if I was just presented two options. However, I am really, really happy with my purchase. Don't get me wrong, I feel like I will use this sponge a ton. I think it is really high quality. It's not exactly like half the price of a beauty blender because I think a beauty blender is like $21 and this is $13. Um, so it's not like this one is like half off of a beauty blender, but certainly if you don't want to spend as much as you would have to on a beauty blender, I think that this is a really good option. Also, it does have the convenience of being on Amazon and I don't know if Beauty Blender has a storefront on Amazon or if they're still just like a Sephora, Ulta, you know, and websites like that kind of thing. My only complaint about this sponge is honestly I just wish it was a little bit thinner of a lemon. But on the other hand, like I do love how just, you know, super puffy that it gets. So it's kind of like one of its biggest strengths is also one of its biggest weaknesses kind of thing. Um, because literally if I would have had better ease with like the inner corners and tight spaces of my face. I'm sure I've said that a thousand times by this point, then um, I feel like I would be ranking this guy much higher. So I really do like it a lot. I just don't think for me it would be a true beauty blender replacement. But there is my, I almost said two cents. This is more like five cents. That is all I can say about our lemon friend. And I would love to know you guys' thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. As always, if you're not already and you'd like to be, hit the button down below, subscribe, become a member of the Banana Pepper Squad. And until I see you guys again, which is gonna be very, very soon, stay happy, stay healthy, stay sassy, stay banana peppery. I love you guys so, so much. And I'll be back again very, very soon. 